No marriage is perfect as in no person is perfect. Honest communication, but also active listening is huge for us. Effective communication. Mm -hmm. So what we have found has been super helpful is prioritizing once a week, me and you, no kids, no work. And then there's no distractions. We mm -hmm. evolve as people. And I think when you share a life with someone, you need to evolve together. In this episode of The Long Game, Brittany and I are sharing what has helped our marriage thrive over the past 10 years. It's far from perfect, but through the ups and downs, we've learned a lot, especially about communication and growing together. We're excited to get into these lessons that have made us stronger as a couple. So let's get into it. So we're going to go into a few of the tips we have that we've learned along the way to have a thriving marriage. We've been married for 10 years. Almost 11. Mm -hmm. Coming up on an anniversary. And I think... We have to say that there's no such thing as a perfect marriage. We yeah. can have a great marriage, but no marriage is perfect as in no person is perfect. Mm -hmm. In each stage, you come to a challenge or you come to a roadblock and you have to come together to work on it. And a marriage is something that it's, it's constantly being worked on and tweaked. And you can't just, okay, I did counseling for two months mm -hmm. in the beginning of our marriage and we're set for life. Right. So You're like, we're, we're always learning, always. Understanding what where each of us is coming from. We mm -hmm. evolve as people. And I think when you share a life with someone, you need to evolve together mm -hmm. too as well. All right. So one of our first tips is communication is key. Communication. First of all, I want to share this yeah. scripture that I really love. And it's something that we, when we were engaged, we were thinking about the future of like us being married, what it means. It says Genesis 2.24, therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife and they shall become one flesh. So I love the idea of becoming one. We're equals and we're together and we're going to look at this through a lens of we're a team. Guys doing life together. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I have to give up what I want for you and sometimes you have to give up what you want for me. Mm -hmm. A little compromise. I don't think we'll go into the percentages, but I know it's not half and half. <laughs> I feel like you're giving up more than... <laughs> My job, happy, happy wife, happy life, <laughs> I believe the saying is. So. All right. So communication. I think open and honest communication, but also active listening is huge for us. Effective communication. Because mm -hmm. there are times where we communicate, but it's if not someone's very not effective. Listening, right. Yeah. Okay, so I love this. This is a reference from the Journal of Marriage and Family Study, which found that couples who communicate effectively are more likely to report higher marital satisfaction. I always love data and stats. And this is a big thing. I feel like if we didn't have a solid foundation for communication, a lot of the other things that we've been doing would be rocky, shaky, mm -hmm. and hard. Our first couple of years of marriage, we didn't have the tools to be able to communicate. And it, it was tough because I'm thinking, well, oh, well, you should be doing this or, you know, it's mm -hmm. it's always you and not some more or less like me looking, OK, what should I be doing or what is that other person going through that has this type of reaction to what's going on? Right. And that's when we we did a little bit of premarital counseling before mm -hmm. we got married. But once we came together... You know, it was it was great, but then it started to kind of like. And my communication skills growing up and what I experienced was if there was a problem, everyone just pushes it under and pretends like it didn't happen the next day and no one discusses anything and acts like everything's great. So you kind of like have that cover up vibe of like pretend like it's good for appearance. So that's what I was trying to do with you. I was like, eh, we had a fight last night, kind of got irritated with each other the next morning. I'll sleep on the couch. She sleeps in the bed. We wake up. We kind of just act like everything's fine. Ignore it. Um, for me. I feel like I, it just is one of those things that just sits with me. I'm like, I can't. And that's probably the people pleaser in me where it's like, I need to figure this out. Where did we not come together on? I need to be able to communicate with her. I need to talk with her. And you're like, I'm no, like, it's I fine. don't. We're good. Yeah, like, we're good. Let's, let's just forget keep about going. It. And so I, it was just in me. I couldn't, I couldn't let that happen. But there are moments where, yeah, we're going to go to bed angry and we wake up and we're just like, I don't want to deal with it. Or, you know, we just continue with the day. But and I remember that you would, we would get, we would never yell. That was never the thing. We never, if we had an argument, we were always like very civil about it, but we would get so frustrated that we like couldn't communicate mm -hmm. where it's like, oh, forget it. And you would walk out and you leave out the door. I had a habit of just peacing like, out. Yeah. I'd be like, I'll just need an hour or two. I'm trying to like figure this out right now. And that was also something I felt didn't bring a stability in our relationship. He's just going to leave if he's frustrated. And I can see that where it's like, oh, he's just giving up. Mm -hmm. And for me, I just need an hour, two hours to just let things calm down. 
let my emotions calm down. Okay, how, what went wrong? How do I analyze the situation? Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, it was always like, well, she did this, or it was a lot of use. How does the other person need to change? And through our counseling, I've learned that I need to focus on how did I make the situation worse? Mm -hmm. How can I make the it's situation better? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, it's always me. <laughs> I always have to apologize. <laughs> no, you've been really good. Yeah, I always apologize. <laughs> so, but that was a really big learning lesson because, okay, let's just focus on what, how did I either, how did I make this situation go this way? Mm -hmm. And through our counseling, I, we were able to, to kind of figure that out. We had someone there to be able to talk through without, without us, you know, our emotions getting hot and I what I loved one of the key lessons that I love from our counseling was using I statements because that focuses on your own feelings and thoughts while a you statement focuses on the other person and can often come across as accusatory or blaming mm -hmm. so for example instead of saying you never make time for us and it's like you don't care about our relationship that's also going to put you just on the defensive versus this is a true statement of how I would feel I would say, I feel hurt that we don't spend much time together because I value our connection and want to make our relationship stronger. I think it's been really helpful to think about why you're annoyed or why you're hurt. Mm -hmm. There's some things where I'll be hurt by something and you're not even realizing that I'm thinking that. And when you turn it into an I statement, you really reflect on why you feel that way and what's the real reason why you're feeling hurt or why you're feeling an issue coming up. Mm -hmm. So I love the statements. We use it with Jaden. We use it when we talk to... Any situation that we had at work, it's like this is the I statements have been very, very helpful for us in marriage, but also in other aspects. And it's also being able to listen to the other person and understanding where they're coming from. Because mm -hmm. there, there could be times where it's just like it comes off a little strong or aggressive. Okay, well, how is that other person feeling? How do they feel about the situation? Kind of put yourself in their shoes. Mm -hmm. And I think once you have that perspective while also looking within yourself, um, it made our communication a lot better. Mm -hmm. And I th after the counseling and putting these things into practice, I feel like we've had a good, strong foundation of being able to, to communicate, communicate. Mm -hmm. not only just as a married couple, but as business partners. I mean, out of all the things that we're going to talk about, I feel like communication is really key and mm -hmm. just being on the same page. I'm always asking you, what do you think about this? What do you feel about this? Yeah. And I have a hard time being able to talk about it but you're getting me out of my shell because it's just like everything's in my head and it is nice and I have to be more aware of Like, what do you think about that? How, how do you feel or mm -hmm. what are you going through? And so that's been a learning thing of mm -hmm. mine. And one of the things that I loved when we were doing the counseling too is each week she would be like, how are things going? And we would bring up things that we didn't even know maybe irritate the other person. So having those kind of checkpoints at the beginning of the like, how are you feeling about things? How did last week go? Just kind of always checking in on each other. There's sometimes where I'm feeling really emotional about something or feeling like, wow, did that did that affect you like that? And you just checking in on me and feeling like we have that emotional support is so big for our other connections as far as like the physical too, because then we're like closer emotionally. Hey, you're showing the other person that you do care for them and you mm -hmm. do value what they're going through. Right. All right. So the communication. Let's talk about prioritizing quality time. And working together, having a family with kids, sometimes we could easily think that, oh, we're spending time together. We always do family stuff on the weekends. We're going to the park. We're taking walks. We're with the kids. We could think, oh, that's quality time. Mm -hmm. But realistically, Jaden's asked me something. Poppy's doing something. I'm with, I'm nursing Elliot. We're, we're all over the place. And we're not really connecting on that level of talking about things, our goals, or how do we feel? And and even during the work week, we're trying to shoot our campaigns or we're trying to do other things that are working on our business. So even though we're together. It's not it, quality like, time. Yeah, we're not having those inner connections. Mm -hmm. So what we have found has been super helpful is prioritizing once a week, me and you, no kids, no work, talking about our dreams, our feelings. And one of the things we decided, because for a while they were like, oh, our date night, we're watching a movie. We stopped doing that. We thought it's not quality time staring at a screen together and we're not talking about anything. For a while, we did do that. Mm -hmm. it was like, okay, Jaden's down. Let's watch a Netflix show. And we right, spend and that's... two to three hours watching, binging on a show. 
but we're not really communicating. We're mm-hmm. just kind of, we're there with each other, but we're not talking. Right. So if we thought, if we want to watch a show, that's one thing. But if our date night is not going to be including that, that's not going to be accounted, whether it's we go for a walk together, we're talking. Recently, we went to coffee. Whatever that is, Thursdays has worked for us. It's It's been the, we're kind of wrapped up for the week. Setting time we're excited, aside. Right. It's scheduled. And it's on even the like our sauna times, we're in the sauna and we're just talking about life and Mm -hmm. there's no distractions so we find these little moments you don't necessarily have to go somewhere it's just we schedule it on the calendar though. schedule on the calendar and just spend time without any distractions i think that's been really important for me my love language is quality time and gift giving so for me i love that time together I, i feel like it's very romantic i just like having you to myself sometimes where i'm like oh let's talk about I love dreaming with you and thinking about the future and I just love it so much. That even goes into, you know, how we communicate. I think anyone that is in a relationship, you have to figure out what the other person's love language is Mm -hmm. because mine is acts of service. So I'm not very affectionate or kissy, lovey-dovey. I think for me, I'm going to show that I love you by making you breakfast or doing the laundry. And that was kind of a that was a thing in the beginning too. That was a like, thing, yeah. Where it's I want like, you to hold my hand, or I want, I want you, you to like time. randomly kiss me, or and I'm cleaning the house, or mm-hmm. doing some random act. And I think being on the same page is like, oh, he is showing he loves me. Mm-hmm. But I also have to make the effort to be able to hold your hand and to kind of break out of my shell and be affectionate. And but it's no. not your natural personality to yeah. be like, oh, let me give you a hug, or it's just like I'm there for you. Whatever you need, I'll mm-hmm. get it done, and you'll you can always depend on me. So. Right. I feel like you really need to understand the other person's love language. So I don't think you need to think too deeply into what the date night is, but making time for something. And it doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be really long. But I would say a half an hour has been at least a good amount of time to where we can get into conversation and we're not so rushed. But we like to do at least an hour and a half is Mm -hmm. what's been the key time. Supporting each other's growth. Another tip. This is something that I think can be overlooked sometimes. When you have a family and you're just getting by, you're doing the day-to-day and you're not thinking, I guess if you're not having those date nights or you're not having that time to talk. I mean, we're in an interesting situation because that we work together and we do have common business goals, Mm -hmm. but there's stuff outside of business. For instance, you want it to learn how to cook. Mm -hmm. And so like sign up for cooking classes. I'm like, yeah, go for it. We have these little hobbies or these personal growth moments that we want to explore and to have your significant other being able to be like, yeah, no, go for it. Or, it. you know, I love that you're learning this. I love that you're trying to do self-improvement. Mm-hmm. Um, and also with you, when we got your whole, the pre-diabetes thing. You thought, I need to get in shape. I want to take control of my health. You're like, I need time in the morning to go to the gym. Like, I want to do this. And so we figured it out. We're like, hey, I'll be with the kids. Or we'll have that schedule to where you have time to go. And I want to support you in that too. Like, so I think coming together and saying, this is what we need. This is what we want on the personal side and or I need time to read. Like I want to do certain things. We need to be able to support each other to where we're feeling like you're not holding me back from something. Exactly. Or you're not paying attention to me or you're not listening because right. these are things that I really want to do. But if I don't feel supported, then I'm going to start feeling some type of resentment. Mm-hmm. And then that can bring on a flood of issues. And- right. I love this study. It's from the Harvard Study of Adult Development, which found that couples who support each other's personal growth tend to have stronger and more fulfilling relationships. But I think that too goes back to that emotional connection. Mm-hmm. You're feeling that love from a different aspect. Okay, so my practical tip is to encourage your partner's goals and set joint goals as a couple. I love that. Can you give an example of our set goal? Our set goal for where we want to be. I think to make this podcast successful, where do we want to be to be able to support Jaden in her college decisions, Mm -hmm. uh, financial goals. I think we're really aligned on there. And we want to be healthy to where we can be around with our kids and be mobile and travel when we want. And I want to be able to cook at home and not feel like I have to order food because I don't know what to do with anything in the kitchen. So what that's one of my personal goals is really feeling like very independent when it comes to food and not so feeling I'm like a master chef right now. He is a master chef. So I signed up for a cooking class that's 15 hours, but it's broken up into sessions. I'm very excited, but he's been super supportive and he's going to help me out on those days with the kids and I'm excited. Jaden's doing it with me too. So the next one is maintaining intimacy and connection. Mm-hmm. And it goes back to understanding the other person's love language. I felt like early in our marriage, 
I had a issue with intimacy. And it wasn't that I feel like we weren't being intimate because there was just a lot of things going on. We were working, we were doing side hustles, and we weren't setting that time aside for just us. And there would be times just like so exhausted at night. And And we didn't have a baby. I mean, Jaden was six or seven. Like she was. We had really no excuse. Right. (laughs) Like we we had more time time than we thought. (laughs) But that was a big thing that we had worked out through counseling because it, in your mind, you're seeing that as he doesn't love me. He mm-hmm. doesn't want to be with me. He doesn't think I'm attractive. And in my mind, I'm just like, I'm so exhausted. Just trying to get through. And I'm just powering through. And it's like, okay, we can get to bed now. And then we're starting the day over again. So that was one thing that out of our counseling session that we had learned to set time. And she she was like, okay, you have to schedule it. And as funny as that sounds, like, okay, we're going to schedule this time to be intimate. Right. It sounded so bizarre at the moment she said it, but she said, I'm telling you, do it for a month and you won't have to schedule it anymore. And it was exactly true. Mm-hmm. There was like that little rut where we were like, this, we're young. I mean, we weren't eating the healthiest. We were not taking care of ourselves, not prioritizing sleep. So I do think that has a Energy lot to do with were it. very low. Just trying to hustle so much, no work life balance. At that time. Mm -hmm. And I feel like all that and also just like, okay, now turn on the switch. Like, Okay, now be intimate. Now be into it. Now like, okay, it's just, it it wasn't there. And when we started scheduling, it's funny how for me, I think once we were intimate, it was like almost all the stresses of life kind of just faded. And it was just me and you having that love connection that mm-hmm. we had and it's just those those feelings were kind of reignited again right. and those were you know special moments where once we got past the scheduling we were making time for it mm-hmm. um, and, and i think that's such a huge tip for us and we had told her too we're like that worked seems so weird but it was super helpful for us just to get into the okay yeah we're a few years into marriage we're in the routine But we also have to prioritize that. It goes back to prioritizing quality time. But now I feel like because we have those date nights, it just come. It's like I'm close to you. We're like it's natural. The the outside forces of the world aren't bugging us. It's just like that one on one time. And I feel like that it it really has made us connect on a more deeper level. Mm -hmm. Just being with each other and remembering this is why we're 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 together. This is why we're married. This is. This is us as one. Mm -hmm. Oh, also, we do make sure that we hold hands in front of Poppy. And we want to make sure that our kids are seeing that affection, too, from their parents. And I think it's cute because every time we do, Poppy said, (laughs) oh, you guys are holding hands. Like, she notices. Mm -hmm. And I I think it's a really good example to show them, like, that's what you want in your partner down the line. I want her to be with someone one day that is also treating her like that or grabbing her hand and having that love connection. Or even with Jaden, now that she's starting to date, you know. I know. It, that's a whole another element where what we do, and we might not be aware of it, but how we treat each other, how I treat you, how you treat mm-hmm. me, is setting her up for, okay, this is what a relationship is supposed to look like. I mean, mm-hmm. we're not perfect and we work things out. But when she starts to date and starts to meet all these different guys and their personalities, we want to set an example of what to expect or what to look for. And how to get through conflict. There, I mean, you can disagree on things, but how you get through it and how you resolve conflict is super huge. And it shows like a character mm-hmm. aspect that I want her to look for in a guy, right? And I think she's done a really good job. Just the little brief. We won't share anything on here just because I don't, I haven't checked yeah. with her, but. Um, she has a great strong head on mm-hmm. her shoulders. She knows what she wants. She has her values and we're very proud of her for that. Yeah. And she's done a great job in mm-hmm. the dating landscape yes. so far. So, All right. Maintaining finances together. I, this is a big one because Just to even reference the Institute of Family Studies, which found that financial disagreements are the leading predictor of divorce. However, couples who openly discuss finances tend to have more stable marriages. Mm -hmm. What we did through our engagement, how we were budgeting for our wedding, that was a solid foundation that we were setting ourselves up for. And yeah, there are tweaks along the way. And as we grow as family, as we purchase a new house, these big life moments, Mm -hmm. We still had that solid foundation of being on the same page. I feel like when we first were doing that too, we were both naturally spenders. 
We, I was never one who had any savings. I had uh, worked an ice cream shop and I never could figure out the savings aspect. I was like, oh, don't you have to just make a lot of money to have savings? Not thinking that you have to save what you have like at the time. So for me, it was a complete other aspect of like, wait, we have to budget. It just didn't come naturally to me. I had no financial literacy at all. And I feel like you did a little bit more. I mean, there's been plenty of times where my account had dipped over or yeah, under a hundred dollars. Overdraft was and my I'm just favorite like, word. Oh yeah. boy! And then I had a credit card, which I mean, that didn't do me any good. It was just, oh, we had money. We no can spend. No investing, right? Or, yeah. So I think that the biggest thing is really coming together and figuring that out because if you do have common goals that you want to achieve as a married couple, if one is spending and the other one's trying to save, I mean, that's a huge disagreement right there. And I remember when I was working in retail, I was in the handbag section and there were ladies that would come in and say, oh, I I need to open a credit card because I don't want my husband to see that I'm buying this. And I mean, I wasn't dating you at the time this yeah. before I met you, but I remember thinking I would never want that in a marriage where I have to hide my money. We did have it to where we set up to where if there are big purchases, you would come to me, okay, mm -hmm. I want to buy whatever X, Y, Z, you know, can we do it? And, you know, let's look at the month. And... Let's look at this. Let's look at a budget. And then if I wanted to buy like a computer. I'd be like, okay, do you think, do we need it? Um, is it feasible? So we always came together mm -hmm. with regards to those bigger spends. And one thing that has been really important for us is tithing 10%. And that's something that we had done even when we were saving for our wedding. Even when I was paycheck to paycheck, that was the one thing that I did very consistently. Is like I trusted God with my money and I thought if I'm obedient in this, he's going to be able to, I'm, I'm not going to stress, right? I'm like, I'm going to work hard. I'm going to give my 10%. And giving was always a part of, it was always a part of my finances, even though I had no idea for savings or anything else. It was like 10% came off first and then I figured out the rest. But me and you together, that's a huge thing is like, I don't care what's coming up. We're doing the 10% together. We do it. We give to our church and we give to Saving Innocence, an organization I'm really involved with, and then New Breath Ministries. So as different things come up, we'll be able to give too. But I feel like that has been really big because if one of us wanted to do that and the other one didn't, that would be divisive. We would be fighting about that. Massive rift. Mm -hmm. I, I think it was, it's really important because as we, as our business does show success, we want to be grateful for where we're mm -hmm. at. We do meet at the top of the month and I love doing our budget meetings together. We also meet with Jaden <laughs> once a week on hers. We're working on that with her right now, but I think it's the, the biggest thing is making sure we're on the same page first. And then that trickles down into our kids. Any other tip in this last six months that you've thought has really helped our marriage? I mean, obviously, we're learning every day, too. I think being on the same page with health. Because mm -hmm. if that would be really tough if I'm trying to can't eat so many desserts and you're over there in the corner eating trying to some cookies and ice cream. You feel you guilty know. for not eating something or, yeah. I think being aligned on health and how we are trying to set ourselves up to where we do live 120 years. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's been a fun thing to kind of come together and be like, oh, I learned this or mm -hmm. this light does this or this supplement does this. And it's like a whole nother world that we're opened up to that we've been doing for the last, what, eight or no, almost a year mm -hmm. since we did the results. Yeah. Blood tests. And I feel like even our monthly budget meetings are us taking a walk. I'm talking about it. Like we're less sitting, we're doing little things where it's okay, let's do this, but also let's let's do a walk. So we yeah. can finding ways talk to get outside it. in the sun, mm -hmm. finding ways to get just a little bit of cardio in. Um, I feel like that's strengthened us together because just being on this the same page and because seeing it, the results too. And it affects what we do on the weekends with the kids. We're instead of watching a movie with them, we're outside going to the park or we're going on a hike. We're trying to get them to what we're doing too. So I think that having that conversation, those conversations we had during date nights too, we want to show our kids more of an active lifestyle. It's been fun to kind of come together on that and mm -hmm. learn together and experience and, and we see the results. And I think being, that is also just being on the same page with how we want to raise our kids mm -hmm. because that, that would be a huge issue if one of us was one way and the other one is like, eh, I don't want to do that we'd be fighting about what we'd feed them, right? It would be completely different. I think that has been really helpful this last year because this is the last year that we've really 
made so many changes. Just the mentality is different. But again, that's something that has been fun to do together and kind of go through it together. Mm -hmm. So after 10 years, almost 11 years of marriage, 13 years of being together, having kids, having a business, these are things that had really set the foundation for us to succeed as a couple, as one. And I hope that it provides value or some insight that you can incorporate into your own marriages or own relationships. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure to catch our new episodes every Thursday, wherever you listen to podcasts. And my handle is at Bernie Xavier on Instagram and TikTok. And Anthony's is at Anthony Xavier. 